properties of real numbers. So in this video, we're going to be going over um, what all can we do with real numbers, how can we rewrite them, how can we manipulate them, and how do they work. So this video is mostly over vocabulary, but there will be some examples over homework problems that go along with this as well. So our first property is the commutative property, and we have this in two different versions of it, the commutative property of addition and the commutative property of multiplication. But it basically works the exact same way. It says, you can rearrange the order of addition and multiplication and it not affect anything when you are doing those operations. So for example, A plus B is the exact same thing as B plus A, and A times B is the exact same thing as B times A. So we can rearrange the order of addition and rearrange the order of multiplication and it not change anything. For example, two plus three is the exact same thing as three plus two. They're both gonna give you five, and two times three is the exact same thing as three times two, that will give you six. So you can see that the order of addition and multiplication does not matter. Now that is not true for other operations, such as subtraction, division, and anything else. So that's why we only have it over addition and multiplication. So one more time, commutative says that we can rearrange the order of these and it not affect our answers. An example of this that you might see on the homework, it says apply the commutative property of multiplication and it has Z times 12. All you need to do is rearrange this. So you can write this as 12 times Z, but most of the time we would just write it as 12Z. So 12Z would be the best final answer here. Our next property is the associative property. And it comes into play when we're trying to add or multiply three different numbers. And just like commutative, we can see that order is not really specific in these two operations. So if I was trying to add A plus B plus C, it wouldn't matter if I needed to add B plus C first or if I wanted to add A plus B and then C. It will all work out the exact same way. Same thing with multiplication. A times B times C, I can multiply B times C first, or I can multiply A times B and then multiply C. So we can rearrange the order of any addition or multiplication of three or more numbers, but again, this does not work with other operations like subtraction and division. An example of what your homework problem might look like. So down here, it says apply the associative property of addition and then simplify if possible. So I see that I'm trying to add three numbers here. Let me rearrange it. So I'm going to add my last two numbers first. And then, of course, to simplify it, I would just add 4 plus 5. So that would give me C plus 9. And since I added them, I no longer need those parentheses. So that is my final answer. So associative says we can rearrange the order of addition or multiplication of three or more numbers. The next property is the distributive property. And it actually combines multiplication along with addition. It kind of goes back to our rules of order. Pimba says that we should officially work the inside of our parentheses first and then move on to the multiplication in this problem outside of that. But sometimes that's just not possible. Sometimes the inside of our parentheses we're not able to combine, but we still want to be able to simplify it. So what we can do is distribute our A through the parentheses. My student once gave me an analogy for this, and it's kind of a silly analogy, but it helps you remember along the way. So let's just say you have multiple pets. You have a dog and you have a cat. Well, if you feed one of them, then you're going to have to feed the other one at the same time. Otherwise, they'll eat each other's food and it defeats the purpose. So the way this works with my distributive property is if I feed the dog, then I have to feed the cat as well. 
So I have to take A times B, giving me AB, and A times C, giving me AC. I have addition in the middle, so I keep my addition in the middle here. An example of how this will look on your homework. I have two examples here, but they're basically doing the exact same thing. They just might look a little bit different. We need to apply the distributive property. So in example one, I need to take this negative a and I need to distribute it all the way through. So in this example, I have to feed my dog, my cat, and my turtle all at the same time. All we need to do here is multiply the numbers in front. So negative 8 times 3 gives me a negative 24. x squared, negative 8 times positive 2 gives me a negative 16 times x. And then negative 8 times negative 1 gives me a positive 8. So I have distributed my negative 8 all the way through those parentheses. In example 2, the same type of thing. I have to feed my dog and my cat. So 7 times a gives me 7a, and 7 times negative 3.1 gives me negative 21.7. So there is my final answer for example 2. So at this time, we've discussed the commutative, associative, and distributive properties, the first three properties. I'm going to end the video here. And in the next video, we're going to be discussing the last two properties, the identity and the inverse property.